Hey everyone, welcome to The Next Wave. Today I wanna to show you how I use AI every day in my work. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how I create ChatGPT projects and what kind of files I put in the project to give it context so that ChatGPT actually becomes like a trusted business advisor that helps me, not only in my business, but also even in my personal life. I'm gonna walk you through all that from A to Z. So let's just jump right in. So first, uh, I think what I wanna to do today is show you an overview of how I have my own project set up most of it's, you know, confidential, so I'm going to have to blur out a lot of things. And then we'll go through just like setting up a new project and like what I would be doing if I was working on something, how I would set up a project to get the most value out of it. Okay, so uh, so here's my project for Lore. Um, you know, un unfortunately, most of everything has to be blurred out, dealing with some pretty confidential, you know, subjects. But he, yeah, I got 22 files in the project. You can see many different PDFs that I have here. And so th these PDFs, they're, they're a range of different kinds of documents that helps ChatGPT know what I'm working on. Really the first and most important one to me is the thesis of my company, which we're a relatively new company, so a thesis makes a lot of sense for us. You know, if you have a more mature business, it might make more sense to have an entire overview of what your business is or what you're trying to accomplish. But I found just having this simple document, every time I talk to ChatGPT now in my project, it has context of what I'm trying to accomplish, which makes it so much better at giving me proper advice versus me having to re-explain what I'm doing or anything like that. And, and yeah, ChatGPT does have memory now, so sometimes it would remember what you're doing. But if you give it like really proper structured context, it, it, it's uh, I find it's so much better. The other type of files I have are a lot of meeting notes. So I'm talking to, like I said, I'm talking to many different people, many, many different areas. Uh, it's hard to keep track of everything. And the main workflow I have, I mean, some people are doing like AI notes. I find those work okay. I find that when I'm dealing with AI and I'm wanting to actually have ChatGPT have the proper context to help me, it's actually important how the notes are framed. So I actually prefer to do the notes myself based on what I remember from a conversation, what was actually of interest to me. And I might sometimes supplement that with the AI, AI notes for like, oh, here's some actual facts from the conversation I, I might have missed. But and, and the way I, I, I do that is uh, I use Whisperflow, which is just like, you know, uh, voice to text with AI. It's really good. I use Whisperflow and I'll, you know, after after a day of like six meetings at the end of my day, you know, and sometimes I even do this on the couch. It's like a like a wind down for the day. I'll just like press the record button and I'll talk for 30 minutes about everything I learned that day talking to various people. And then I'll ask ChatGPT, hey, here's like my template for how I like the notes to look. Give me notes you know, and, and I'll just copy and paste those into Google Docs. You could you could do it however you want, but that's how I do it. And then I just export it as a PDF and then I add it to the project. And what that does is like when you're learning from all these different people, now when you talk to ChatGPT, it's got the context of your business. It knows the people you've been talking to and what you've been learning from them. And you start to discover so many new opportunities from that that, that, that might be surprising. And, you know, a lot of things in business like that are like discovering something new by connecting dots that other people were not able to connect. And AI is incredibly good at doing that, especially if you get the proper context like this. Another another way uh, that I use is like, you can see that there's an image file here. This is a diagram of what I'm building. Um, and, and I think people, you know, uh, underappreciate the fact that AI models are, you know, ChatGPT, Claude, you name it, they're all very good at understanding images now. And so you can add an image to a project like this and it actually gets a lot of context out of that, right? Because this, this is a complicated diagram showing the different parts of the system I am building and how they all interconnect. And from sharing that image, I, I've tested ChatGPT. It understands the system I'm building way better because of this diagram. So these are some financial models of like how, uh, you know, how profitable data centers are, what are the most important numbers to be mindful of uh, in terms of cost of debt and uh, building, et cetera. And... I found that this is helpful. I would say this is probably the weakest area for AI models right now is like when you hand them something like this, you know, unfortunately you can't like upload a, a spreadsheet yet. So I tried uploading spreadsheets. I was, I was hoping that would work. It did not. So the best I could find was doing like a PNG or you possibly could do a PDF. And it helps some. I would say that AI gets the gist of, of financial models, but it's not, I would say they're not, the models are not good enough yet to like really, really be able to, uh, you know, ext extract a lot of knowledge out of the models. Like if you ask it questions, it'll get the basics right. But if you ask it anything complicated involving financial models, it'll probably not give you the most accurate. <laughs> so I, so it's, it's good for like an overview to give your project more context around financials. But I would not depend on that yet. That's something I'm hoping that AI models get better at soon. And I think they will. 
So another another one I found is super useful is uh, you know I have, I have a key contacts file like a lower key contacts and you know maybe you could set up HubSpot to do something like this somehow or some system like that. Uh, but I just use like a Google Doc and I I copy and paste the names and I have ChatGPT help me update it. So it actually knows all from all the notes I've uploaded. It already knows who who are all the important people I'm talking to because I've already uploaded the meeting notes. And so I'll just copy and paste the key contacts into the project and say, hey based on all the new conversations I've had with these important people, who who is critical that I must keep in contact for that person and what category do they fit into, you know, in terms of how I can help them or how they can help me. And so I I found that so useful because because now when I talk to my, uh, when I talk to ChatGPT, it sometimes suggests to me, oh, you should reach out to this person who was in a major position in government before and, and things like this. It'll make these kind of suggestions that I may not even think of. And uh, that has been so useful where I've been able to like, you know, make progress, you know, in three months that most people would take them a few years, um, quite honestly, using something like this. Another thing that, that I found a, a value is uploading, you know, a presentation of what you're working on. It's similar as like uploading, uploading the thesis of, you know, about what you're working on. So uh, ChatGPT has more context. But something that's actually kind of, you know, unique about uploading a presentation is it doesn't only get the... Uh, the, the content, but it also gets the style. Like the, it, it learns from the style of what you're building, which is useful for if you're going to do anything else design related. You know, I, I, I'm someone who kind of, I'm a hands-on with all parts of my business. I like to do from business to, you know, writing to content to marketing. And, you know, when I'm working on the website or when I'm producing some, you know, a presentation or whatever, it's really useful that ChatGPT, this project knows what my current style is. It's almost like an unofficial style guide by looking at that and on all the other notes about what I'm working on. It's actually very good at saying, oh, this is actually, does it match the style for what you're, for the brand you're building? And I, I've, I've been fascinated by how good it is. Like you can work on a presentation and, and share a slide and say, what do you, you know, share a PNG or a whole PDF of the entire presentation and say, hey, what do you think of this? And Every single time a new AI model comes out, they're better and better at like actually understanding what's good style and if the style matches what your what, you know your style. So that's like an overview of how I use projects. Hopefully, for a lot of you, this is this is something new that you're learning here. And, and then in a second, I'm going to show you how to actually set up, set one up. Really, the main takeaway I, I I want people to have is any project you're working on, whether it's business or even personal. If you find that when you talk to ChatGPT, you have to re-explain things a lot, really you should be setting up a project and making sure you give ChatGPT the proper context because the results I get seem to be, you know, at least from conversations with with friends who have not done this, uh, the results I get from ChatGPT seem to be dramatically better than what they get. And I think it's primarily because of context and probably a year or two ago, like AI systems were not as good at dealing with large contexts, but now they, they're, they're, they're so good at dealing with large contexts. As of now, I've got 22 files in this project, and I, it, it, it can recite lines from any of them. It, 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 it takes learnings from all the notes and from all the different files. And so I highly suggest if you're not doing it, you should, you, you should try setting up a project and giving ChatGPT as much context as possible. I think you'll be surprised by how much better the results will be for you. Look, if you're using ChatGPT in your business, you're already ahead of most people. But here's the thing. Most business owners are barely scratching the surface of what's possible. The HubSpot team put together a ChatGPT guide that shows you the advanced strategies top performers are using right now. It's packed with practical stuff you can implement today. Get it right now. Scan the QR code or click the link in the description. Now, uh, let's get back to the show. So, so now let's let's show. I'll show you how to set up a project. It's really simple. So you just go into ChatGPT, and also there's something similar in Claude. I forgot, uh, I forgot what it's called, but they have a, they have a projects kind of feature as well. But you just you click new project. They have some new things here where it's like a. I, I guess that's just like if you just want to get started faster, this is easier for you. But I typically would you know type in whatever. Let's say you know the next the next way project. You know, and if you want to add some flair to it or a color or whatever. You can, and it's pretty simple. You create the project. There are some settings here for some privacy related stuff if you want to dive into it, but they're, they're they're quite simple, and you you can check that out on your own. And now you've got a project. So if you so instead of going into normal ChatGPT, if I was wanting to work on something related to the Next Wave podcast, I would go in here instead, and then also I would add files. So as, as we've been talking about, you know, I would add, let's say for example. Here, here's an here's an image, you know, a, a diagram. 
And then I would add, let's say I had a meeting with, uh, with Cisco and anything like this. Like, let's say I have key contacts. Like you, you can just add the files. Um, and I, I believe you can actually just leave here. You don't actually have to wait for it to, to, to upload. I believe as long as you leave the window open, it keeps doing it. So now if I talk to ChatGPT, it automatically has the contacts of what's in these files, right? So if I, if I talk to it about who are my contacts or anything like that, it'll automatically know. And so if you edit a, a document here, we should be able to ask questions now. So for example, tell me about the business I'm working on and what my goals are. And, and you can see when it first was, it was showing a status message here it was saying, uh, that it was checking the project context. So that's where it's actually checking all the files in the project before it gives you an answer. And yeah, it's totally, so it, it sees the document. It understands it. You know, the business you're working on, you're operating Brightline Analytics, a B2B SaaS company that sells an AI-powered reporting and dashboard, yada, yada. So, you know, it gets all the stuff that you put in the document. It's all accessible that now. And like I said before, just by doing it, it doesn't seem like a big deal. But now the fact that you've you've given it that context it it starts to act like a you know um, a trusted ad advisor in your business or or even in personal matter any uh, complex personal matters where you know if you just talk to ChatGPT yeah it might have some basic memory but it probably won't have the full context and if you really want to control like a, a, you, if you really want to make sure that ChatGPT has all the context for what you're working on this is the way to go okay and I'll I'll also add an image here now one one thing that's kind of counterintuitive is people probably their first int intuition is that you're in the project and you're just going to drag an image here, but that's different. That's that's like using the the image in the chat. That's not adding it to the actual project. So you need to actually go here to add files. Oh, I wish they would change that, and make it easier. But that is that's how you, how it currently works. And then, for example, we could add an image here. So I've added a ChatGPT image that shows some kind of business diagram. And I've found that before I started using projects, I, I, I would talk, I, I, would, I would leave open a single chat on a certain topic. And then eventually the context gets so long that the chat gets laggy. So I would try to start a new conversation and then give, give ChatGPT the proper context to understand what I was working on. But now with projects, you don't have to do that, right? Like, because it, it has all the, the context. And one thing I found that, that's, that's pretty interesting is you can give it a bunch of context, um, about your working on what you're working on, and and actually, ChatGPT is quite good at helping you to um, create images that explain your business or, or or create diagrams. And it seems that once you've you've done that, it actually even helps you. Even, just, it, it sounds silly, but but just adding a diagram like that seems to help ChatGPT understand your business overall better. Um, and so I found that like there, there's great value in. Uh, even having ChatGPT create, help, help create diagrams based on what you've told it uh, and then uploading those diagrams to the project. One last thing I should uh, uh, show people that I think is an interesting feature. I'm not sure if I personally like the way that they've implemented it, but you can share projects. And I think most people don't realize that. And my, my understanding of how sharing projects works is that once you share a project, it kind of creates a new chat. So like, so technically a project before you shared it and after, they're kind of slightly different things. Because once you've shared it, it kind of creates a new chat. That way, that way, if you were already talking about your to your pro to the project, uh, you might have said some things that were confidential or some stuff that was personal that you didn't want in there. So once you share it, it actually starts like a fresh new history for that. The reason I would I would imagine people would want to share is because you know, like for example, now right now I'm dealing with you know two business partners. And I'm I'm going into tons of meetings. Some of those meetings they they go in there with me. Some of them they don't. Sure, I can share the meeting notes, but you know there's so many uh, meetings that it's it's actually quite useful to share a project where if somebody has questions about what's been learned or or or, or, or different things about what's going on, if you share that project, they have that context. They can go in there and ask their own questions. Now, the one thing I don't like is my understanding is once you share the project, you're now all in this kind of like shared project thing where if I went in there and asked some dumb questions or some questions I felt might be dumb, I believe that the other team members can see that is my understanding. I could be incorrect of that, but I believe that's how it works. I would note that any of your private memories from ChatGPT, they say it really clearly here, that any of your any of your pri your, your private personal memories, uh, those do not get shared at all. So like anything that ChatGPT has saved about you personally, none of that gets injected, to the, injected into the project. So I think, I think that's something people probably uh, worry about. 
but it's pretty cool. They even have a thing where you can share it on like X and Reddit. I'm not sure how people actually, if they people actually do that or <laughs> that seems kind of weird to me, but it's it's interesting. But yeah, that, that's kind of like an overview of, of projects. Um, you know, it's not the, the most sexy thing in AI, but I, you know, just, just from conversations with people, people don't understand how much more useful AI can be for business or even personal matters, complex personal matters with projects. So if you haven't, if you haven't tried projects, I suggest you like create a project. You know, you can do it in ChatGPT or Claude and put as much context in there as you can. Like, you know, anything that you think would be useful for what you're working on, put it in there. And I think you'll be, you'll be shocked that then when you go in to talk to ChatGPT in that project, it's, it's going to give you so much better advice. And the awesome thing is like, you just keep adding files and new AI models come out that are better. And it's like, oh, now my business advisor is smarter now. <laughs> that's that's how I feel like when a new model comes out because AI already has so much context about my business and I use it daily for advice. You know, of course, it is AI. So when it gives you advice, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But that's, you know, I, I do the same thing with uh, with real people as well, right? Like you should take in take in their advice and treat it as a, uh, a data point, uh, not as a uh, exactly what you should do. And if you, you know, if you already use projects, uh, I would suggest that, you know, if you maybe you've learned some new things about like that you can add diagrams and things like that in presentations. If you're not using projects that way, I, I suggest you try it. I suggest you try giving it more context than you think it needs. And, uh, you know, you might be surprised and it, it might be able to help you in ways that you didn't know, especially related to design and other things, too. So I hope this has been useful. It's kind of like a different kind of episode that we wanted to try out today. And I thought it'd be fun just to show how I'm using AI on a daily basis. You know, there's a lot of other cool to tools I use, you know, I use, uh, for some of the, di the the more complicated diagrams, I've used things like uh, Nano Banana Pro from Google. You know, I'll, I'll swap over to Claude for things, you know, for some things, Grok for others, but really, really primarily my main driver for AI is ChatGPT uh, project. So ho hopefully this was useful to you all. And if, if you liked it, let me know and we'll do some more episodes like this in the future. Thank you so much. And we'll see you the next time on the next wave. <laughs>